this video, we are going to take a quick look at AngularJS data binding fundamentals. As part of this, we are going to take a look at three Angular directives, namely ng-bind, ng-model, and ng-click. Once you complete this video, you should be able to have some sound understanding on one-way, two-way, and one-time bindings available as part of AngularJS. So let's jump in. So what exactly is data binding in general terms? So imagine I have some user interface and I have some business logic and that particular business logic might be able to provide some kind of data or model directly to UI. So I should have some kind of mechanism which actually connects our user interface to our data so that whenever data gets changed, our user interface should be automatically reflected with the new changes. So that connection has to take care the, about the responsibility of propagating the information from the data to UI automatically. So which means my responsibility from the business logic point of view is just change the data and forget about how it is going to propagate to UI. So the propagation will be automatically done by the data binding concept. So which means data binding is a particular feature which strongly tries to connect the user interface and the data in such a way that the data automatically gets propagated to UI or UI actually sends back the information back to data. So it could be established in such a fashion. So you can see I have a connection here. Now the data binding, which means the responsibility of this particular data binding is nothing but, first of all, it has to establish a connection. So there should be a connection between your particular user interface and the data. The next thing is that, that particular synchronization of data, which means the data which is available here needs to be sent here. And similarly, once the user is actually providing some information in this UI, has to be automatically sent back to data. So this particular synchronization of data from the UI back to data or from data to UI should be automatically happening and that is going to be automatically done and is the responsibility of the data binding. So this is in general terms. So how the data binding really works. So let us see from the AngularJS terms. First of all, data binding from the AngularJS terms is still the same. However, instead of UI, you are going to call that one as view and markup. And in terms of business logic or data, you will be working with controller and scope. So the concept of data binding still exists in the same fashion. That is establishing a connection, synchronizing the data between UI uh, that is the view and the scope, all will be automatically done by AngularJS. So that heavy lift of code of the synchronization of data between scope and the view or view to the scope is automatically done and handled by the data binding capabilities of AngularJS. So let us see how it can be achieved. The first thing is that we should understand there exists three kinds of data binding as part of AngularJS. The first one is one-way data binding. What exactly is one-way data binding? So imagine I have the view and also the controller or this uh, or scope. So I have the view and scope which are actually connected using the data binding mechanism of AngularJS. Now whenever scope wants to send the data it can send. So which means the data travels from the scope to the view which means for the first time whenever the scope is filled with the data it will be immediately sent or propagated to view so which means the data travels in one direction here that is from scope to view so let us see in much more detail from both uh, view and scope perspective during one-way binding the first thing data actually flows from the scope to the view which we already talked thought about. The next one is scope data. So what happens to scope data? All the data available in the scope gets propagated to view. We already knew this. So all the data available in the scope can be sent to the view and view will be consuming the data. Any data modifications to the scope even after the propagation to the view will be again propagated to view. 
So which means even though the scope has sent the information to view and if for some reason the controller happens to modify some information or data available in the scope, again that new modifications or any modifications to any of the members available in the scope will be immediately reflected back to view. So that is pretty important. All the new modifications of the scope will be automatically propagated to view regardless of whether view is asking for it. So view may not really ask for new modifications. So all it really does is just receives the information as long as the scope is really sending. So it does not stop receiving the information. So view will be continuously receiving the information from the scope and the scope will be sending the information to view based on the modifications you are making at the scope level. And from the view perspective, no propagation happens back to the scope, which means view will not be able to send any information back to scope. It is only one way, that is only from scope to view, but not view to scope. So even though the view gets more information or some modifications from the user, it will not be able to send any information back to scope as because it is only one, it is always only one way, that is from scope to view. And in order to achieve this kind of data binding that is only one direction that is from scope to view, it is always performed through the Angular directive called ng-bind or you must be already familiar by now that is the Angular based evaluation expressions. So you can use either of these two in order to have one way data binding to be accomplished. The next one is two way data binding and the name says it all. So I can have the scope sending the information to the view and at the same time view also sending back the information to the scope. So which means it is two way that is scope to view and view to scope. So let us see in detail. So data flows from scope to view and vice versa which we already explained. The next thing is scope data. What happens to scope data? All this data available at the scope will be propagated to view including all the new modifications. So any new modifications or any changes to the scope data will be immediately propagated to view. And from the view perspective, any kind of modifications happening at the view will be immediately sent back to the scope. This is pretty important. Any modifications to view, like if you have a text box and the user types in some information to the text box, that will be immediately sent to a member of the scope. So all that is automatically handled by AngularJS and how can I achieve that? You can achieve always two-way binding using ng-model directive. So we are going to have that one also as part of our demo. Next, the final one which is one-time data binding. The name says it all, one time. Only once the information will be propagated to the view from the scope. Now you can see from the scope I have all the data for the first time whenever the controller gets instantiated, scope gets created, scope will receive the data and that particular data only for the first time and only once it is going to be sent to, to view. And for some reason if scope gets modified, the second information or say the new modifications will never be sent to view. Those will be kept only at the scope and will never be propagated to view and that is one time data binding. So which means view receives the information only once from the scope and that too at the very beginning. That is called one way data binding. So let us see more in detail. We already knew that data flow happens from the scope to the view. The scope data, all the scope data will be propagated to view and that is also only once and that is for the first time only. Any new modifications to the scope will never be propagated to view. And let us see from the view perspective for one-time data. As part of this particular one-time data, from the view perspective, there is no involvement of view at all as part of one-time data binding. That is, no propagation happens from the view to the scope. So all it does is just only from the scope to view and that's also only first time and view will never be able to communicate back to scope at all. 
So in order to achieve this kind of one-time data binding in AngularJS, you will be using double colon as part of evaluation expressions. So we are going to see more and more about all of these data bindings in depth uh, in my coming up videos. And for now, let us stick to these three. That is one-way, two-way, and one-time data bindings. So let us jump straight into our uh, samples. So let me create a new a JS file here. So till now I have been working with all the HTML files, writing all the code of Angular JS as part of the HTML itself. And now as we are going to have more and more complicated Angular JS scripts to be written, it is a good idea actually to split our particular JavaScript into a separate file and the HTML into another file. So for that purpose, I am going to create a new file here. And this one I am going to call something like uh, d01.js so that is just the JavaScript file alone and similarly I'm going to create one more file and I'm going to call this one as d01.htm so which means I have two files d01.html and d01.js so in this file all I'm going to write is just only the AngularJS script and as part of HTML we are going to link our particular d01.js directly inside this particular d01.html and then we are going to have all the view or the markup only to be written as part of HTML but the entire JavaScript will be actually written as part of d01.js so let us start with HTML now. So I have the HTML and the first thing I really need is uh, to actually import our AngularJS script. So in this case I am just copying it from my previous example. So that is I got my AngularJS library which is fixed in and then I have the d01.js. I would like to have this d01.js to be included as part of this one. So I am going to have one more script and it is of type JavaScript anyway and now I am going to say it has to link with the d01.js so in that way I am including all the script whatever is made as part of this d01.js to be made available here so let me split the view so that we will have a better understanding so I go to view and layout so probably into two columns and I would like to split the HTML here and just have only d 01 js at the left side. So as part of the first one, so that is we are going to look at one-way data binding. So as part of one-way data binding here, the first thing I would like to have is create a module and I would like to say angular dot module and I would like to call the module name as app. You can also call it as sample, whatever you would like to call it as and next I would like to create a simple controller and in this case I would like to provide the name of the controller as EMP and as part of this one I have to provide dollar scope which can be used as part of my particular dollar I mean a controller and I'm going to say scope here as well okay so now I have function scope which means my particular controller can use dollar scope as part of its own implementation and I would like to hard code a couple of values to my scope so that is I would like to have A and B as two different members which will be made available as part of the scope and all I really have is dollar sorry 10 and 20 which are being made available as part of A and B so let us come to this one so that is our HTML page so as part of HTML page the first thing is that we need to have our angular app to be actually made available to any of the elements so in this case I am actually choosing only body tag to be acting as an angular application so you can attach this to any element for now I am just attaching directly to the body and you can see the name of this app is actually in coincidence with whatever the app we are defining here so now that we have the angular app now I need to create another element which actually links up with this particular controller and now I would like to say something like I would like to have uh, dev oh, 
and now I also would like to see that I have controller and I would like to say I am working with the MP and now I would like to have another div as part of this div all I would like to display is value of A is actually just A and I am going to have another BR tag here so it's not just BR tag just the BR tag so similarly I am going to have one more that is B and I am going to say B so all I am saying that is this particular member A should be evaluated based on the scope whatever is linked with the EMP so in this case you can see the EMP scope has got the variable A and you can see I have a value 10 which will be directly placed here and similarly I have the same thing which actually tries to get the value of B in the form of 20 so let us see if this is working first and we we are quite familiar with this operation anyway but we are going to extend this particular criteria much more so it is d01.html so let me go to d01.htm and press enter and now you can see I have value of A is 10 and value of B is 20 okay so this is nothing but one-way binding which is happening like from the scope I'm having all the values to be sent to the view and I'm using evaluation expressions so you can see as part of my presentation so one-way binding it can happen through expression evaluations or using ng bind so we haven't gone through this one yet so I'm going to introduce ng bind now but you can see we achieved one way binding using evaluation of expressions and in this case the expression is nothing but this particular brace double brace expressions those are the angular based expressions so let me have a quick horizontal rule here so as part of this so I would like to have more um, not more just I would like to have some kind of text here and I would like to use a span tag and as part of this particular span tag I would like to have one more break so let us go this way I have A and I also have B okay cool so as part of this particular span tag I would like to have the value of A to be displayed so which means I would like to have this particular element to be bound to one of those particular members available as part of the scope and that is where ng bind comes in so ng bind is an attribute where it actually acts as a particular member so in this case what I'm saying is AngularJS please find all the tags which has the directive ng bind and get those particular members and evaluate those members directly against the scope or the current scope which is nothing but the EMP based scope so wherever it finds the members which are defined as part of ng bind attribute here it actually goes through those that particular current scope of EMP which is nothing but this guy finds A in here gets the value out of it which is 10 and sets that particular value to the text property of span so whenever I say text property of span which is nothing but the content of the span so the content so which means if you have something like some content here that particular content will be actually replaced with whatever the value available as part of this particular ng bind so that is very important so similarly I can have ng bind with a value b so which means even in this case it has to actually evaluate this particular member get a value 20 from its scope and place the 20 as a text or the content for this particular span so let us see if this is working so I go back and I just refresh this and now you are able to see that the span tag is actually having 10 so if you go to inspect and now you can see the span tag is actually having the content as 10 that is very important so now you can see in my particular code I did not provide 10 here 
but angular js is smart enough that whenever you provide this it has to pull the value of a and place that or insert right here and that is exactly what it did here so that is how ng bind really works ng bind tries to work with those particular elements which are mostly read only but not input based elements like text boxes or whatever so it clearly works with span div paragraph tags h1 I mean header based tags like h1, h2, h3, h4, uh, italic, strong uh, and even even bold, underline, those kind of tags like even uh, list items or evals or whatever. So those are the items which can really have the ng bind to be provided. But make sure that ng bind is not going to work with input based elements like check boxes, text boxes, radio buttons or whatever. That is not how it works. So ng bind needs to be made available to non input elements only. So that's the first thing we need to understand. Okay. So now let us go back here. And uh, for example, I am available right here. So we know that we can always get the current element by just saying angular dot element and then I can say like dollar zero dot scope. So which means we are actually trying to get the current scope of this particular element which is nothing but we are going to get the scope of EMP. So if you open this you can see currently I have A and B. So let me clear everything and let me try to modify the value of A. So you can say I am trying to modify the value of A to something like 100. Make sure that if I modify the value of A technically AngularJS is supposed to automatically send or propagate this new value to our view. It does it automatically. However, as we are in the console, it is not going to do immediately. And for that purpose, I had to ask it to propagate it in a manual fashion. So you can see right now, if I again open my scope, you can see I actually have A as 100, but I do not have 100 to be replaced here because you are at the console level at the moment and you are not really working directly with the controller. So in order to propagate all those particular modifications of the scope back to the view, for now, make sure that you are calling digest. And the moment I call digest, you can see 100 is actually made available as part of those particular bindings which has been tied up with that particular member A which is including span. So you can see the span is automatically changed to 100 and even the previous text is changed to 100. This digest is automatically going to kick in if it is being executed as part of AngularJS and I am going to discuss more about digest in my coming up videos. For now, just consider that if you modify any member values or members of any scope those particular values will be automatically propagated you need not call dollar digest we are going to see that uh, in my next example anyway so just to give you a quick idea do not just simply try to assign some value in the scope and expect those values to be returning back here if you are using console you have to do something like dollar digest at least for now and we are going to have a couple more methods which are which i'm going to discuss in my next video anyway so let us get back to our sample so now that we have some understanding on uh, what I say one way binding that is using evaluation expressions and using ng bind now is the time actually to jump into one time binding so I would like to introduce one time binding here before actually turning to two way binding so let us modify this a bit so let me uh, create a duplicate of this file and I am going to call this one as d02.html and similarly, I am going to do a duplicate of this guy as well, that is a JavaScript file. So I am going to call this one as something like d02.js. Okay, so let me close d01 and let me close d01 here. So now I have the same previous working sample. So let me enhance this a bit. And imagine I would like to add a new method to my scope. So that is... Uh, to the scope, I would like to have a new method, something like do 
double and sum it off. So it is just a simple function. So as part of this function, what I'm going to do is, first of all, I would like to double the value available as part of A and B. So in this case, I'm just going to double it. So by just saying something like star 2. So I'm going to double it. Similarly, I'm going to do the same thing for B as well. So the point here to understand is, you are modifying the value of A and you are also modifying the value of b the moment you are calling the function. So initially the scope is having only those two values. However, once this function is executed, you are actually modifying the member values. That is the point here. And next, we are going to have a new scope member to be created which is called sum. I do not have any sum here, but I am going to create a new thing called sum. And I would like to have um, the value of A to be summed to the B right now and I would like to actually convert whatever the value I have in place to uh, something like integer. So I'm going to say convert A to integer and do the sum with B. So I'm going to have B here. So let me bring this one down so that we'll have a better understanding. So all I am trying to accomplish here is, once this particular function is getting executed, we are going to modify the value of A, we are going to modify the value of B, essentially doubling those two. And the new values are going to be placed here, summing them up and actually modifying the value of a new member called sum. So if this particular member is not available, it is going to be created. So if you do not know about how the members are going to be created and modified, you wanted to watch my advanced videos, advanced JavaScript videos. So for now, let us consider this particular sum is the member which actually tries, which actually will be created automatically once you try to assign any kind of value to that. If that particular member is not available, it will be created. If the member is already there, it just modifies the previous value or replaces the previous value with the latest value. Okay, so now that I have the function, I would like to call this particular function the moment I click on a button. So, so let me enhance this a bit. So I'm going to have one more HR here. So in this case, I would like to have a button and I would like to introduce a new Angular directive called ng-click. So ng-click is something like uh, an automatic click implementation of AngularJS. So let us see how it works. So I, I, I can provide something like do double and sum right here. So just like our ng bind, you know that whenever you provide a value here, it gets evaluated to the current scope, that is EMP scope, and it knows that it has to fill all of this stuff. Similarly, whenever you provide something like this, I forgot this. So whenever you provide a function, and that particular function will be evaluated and executed based on the current scope. So that is how ng click really works. So whenever you provide ng-click with a particular function and again the parenthesis, which means you are asking AngularJS to execute this particular function which is available as part of current scope and that will be automatically done by Angular. So now I would like to provide something like calculate. Okay, so this is a simple button you can see and the caption of the button is calculate here. And I would also like to have um, one-time binding. Uh, let, uh, let me see what happens here. I'm going to introduce one-time binding later. But for now, you have values of A and B here, which are also going to be the same here, except that here I'm using evaluation expressions, but here I'm binding using ng-bind. Now, the moment I click on this particular button calculate, it is going to execute my function, which essentially modifies the value of A and modifies the value of B, creates a new value sum. 
and however I am not displaying sum so let me display sum also so I would like to say something like the value of sum is going to be displayed as part of this so I can provide this here you know what let me provide this just immediately after this guy just for now okay so let me see what's going on. So you can see I'm actually saying sum, which means this particular sum needs to be evaluated based on the current scope. So if the scope doesn't have it, as you know, it will not throw any error. It just ignores it. So let me go back here and I'm going to say instead of D01, D02. So let me close everything. And now you can see I have A, B which are having 10 and 20, 10 and 20 and I have sum equal to with no value. Calculate is just beside sum because I do not have break tag here. So let me put a break tag here so that we'll have a better understanding on what we are trying to accomplish. So let me refresh it and now you can see how it is going to be showing. It is blank here because for the first time whenever our particular scope is getting executed or instantiated or initialized this is not executed. This gets executed if and only if you click on the button. Right now I did not click on the button. So there is no member called sum. And if the member is not available, it cannot evaluate. And if it is unable to evaluate, it just returns nothing. So which means in this case, this part has got no value and that is the reason it is empty. But this sum gets created the moment I click on the button, which essentially tries to uh, update the value of A, B and also tries to create sum. So let us switch back to my uh, web page and click on calculate here. Okay, I am missing on something. So let us see what I am missing here. So do double and sum, so which is correct here. Okay, the point I missed was it is supposed to be with D02. That is the mistake I did. So which means even though I'm working on D02, I imported D01. So that was the reason it's not working. So let me modify that and let me refresh this guy. Let me close everything. And now once I refresh this and click on calculate, now you can see the value of 20, I mean the value of A has been doubled from 10 to 20. Similarly B from 20 to 40. And I did not do any digest. Just like in my previous example, I showed you like dollar digest has to be done from console. So in this case, I'm not using dollar digest. All I'm doing is just modifying the value here. So the moment you modify the values as part of the scope in your controller, the views get automatically caught up with the latest values as, as because all those particular values will be automatically propagated to the views as part of one time binding. So if I return back, you can see even the sum has been created, which essentially is nothing but 20 plus 40. And you can keep on clicking on calculate and you can see how the values are actually doing their job. So which means all the values are simply getting doubled for every of those particular clicks and all of those values are really working fine. Okay, now let me add a tiny part to my particular sample. So as part of this, I would like to say something like initial value of A is A. And we know what is this. So essentially nothing but I am using the same evaluation expression here also, which means the same value whatever I have in A here will also be propagated or say updated as part of the view here also. So this is no difference from whatever I have in place. So you can see it says initial value of A is 10. But the moment I click on calculate, as you know, A value is being modified and here also and here also. But imagine this initial value of A should not be changed after the value 10 for the first time. So which means if I refresh my application again, initial value of A is 10, which is perfect. But the moment I click on calculate, A and B values get updated and once they get updated, this also gets updated. I do not want this value to be updated. However, I want other values to be updated. So which means these need to be automatically uh, receiving the latest updated values from the scope, but not this one.
So if such is the case, all you have to do is just put double colon here. So the moment you put double colon, it says that please get the value of A only during the first time initialization of scope. So that is whenever it tries to execute this one. And later on, if any modifications are done to those particular variables like A or B, do not get those values from later on. So which means only once. This needs to be bound only once and any future modifications to this particular variable A should never be updated to the view. So let me save this. And I go back to my particular application. Let me refresh this. And the moment I refresh this and click on calculate, now you can see only these values are getting updated but not the value of A. So this is one way binding and this is one time binding. So which means this value gets bound only once. However, these values are always being received from the scope as long as the scope tries to modify any of the values. So that is how we actually went through one binding, sorry, one way binding and one time binding. So let me create a new sample for our two way binding. So for that purpose, let me actually uh, do what? Okay, let me duplicate this file again. So let me duplicate this to D03. So it is D03 and I would like to have D02 to be duplicated to D03 as well. And let me close the other two. And let me make sure that it is D03 which I missed earlier. So now we have D03 everywhere. So let me save. So let me save everything. Okay, so let us continue with whatever I have in place. So let me first remove whatever I have here. So I'm going to remove this. And value of A is this. And I'm going to remove all of this stuff. And I would like to have some to be displayed. So I just wanted to keep it like that for now. And I would like to have calculate to be made available. And I do not want this. So I just wanted to remove this one. So I would like to have a new function to be written, something like do sum. <coughs> so that is going to be my uh, new function, which needs to be written as part of uh, my scope. So let me do how I can accomplish that. So scope dot do sum equal to function. So this is the new function which I'm going to write. So as part of this, I, I am going to have a very simple logic that is I am going to have a new member called sum to be made available for which I am going to have the parsing of integer to be made again as to scope dot a and similarly parsing of integer again as to scope dot b. So which means I am just converting a and b from, from strings to integers here and I am just actually adding those two to sum. Even in my previous example, I do not need to work with percent, but just to be safe side. In this case, this is pretty important for this example only. It is not essential for previous example as you are directly working with uh, numeric values. But in this case, what I am going to do is, I am going to get these values straight from input box. So that is text boxes. So if you are using text boxes, those values, whatever you receive from the text boxes, are going to be of type strings. So you need to have those particular strings to be really converting to parse integer and then may, I mean, sum them up or do any kind of numeric computation or calculation. Okay, so value of A is A. Okay, so let me go here and let me refresh this with D03 for now. And you can see A is 10, B is 20, and I do not have sum. The moment I click on calculate, you can see I got 30, which is fine. Now, I would like to have a text box here where I can modify the value of 10 to something like 100. And I would like to have another text box here where I can modify the value of B from 20 to something like 200. And if I click on sum or calculate, it has to take those two values of my particular text boxes and then 
those two need to be summed up and provided with the new values. So let us see how I can achieve that. So value of a is a and I can also write something like uh, but you can change using an input box. So in this case I am going to have an input box to be written. So as part of this input box I am going to say type equal to text and ng model equal to a. So this is the new piece. So let me take the same direction as I am using there. So even, even in this case, I am going to say something like this one is going to be B. Oh, this needs to be just after this guy. Okay. So this is going to be B as well. Okay. So let us see what I did. This is all plain text except an evaluation expression. This is the evaluation expression I have in place. And now you can see all I really have is just a new thing called input type equal to text and with ng model as a. So which means I am saying that a new text box needs to be created. However, it needs to be bound to the member a which is available as part of the current scope. And you can see again this will be evaluated as part of the current scope which is nothing but a. But the benefit of using ng model against ng bind is whenever the user types any information as part of this text box that will be automatically carried to our scope. So if you come back to my previous presentation here you can see as part of two-way binding I can say we can have our view to be actually sending back the information to our scope by using ng model. If you use ng bind you can only get from scope to the view but the moment you use ng model it gets from here to here and also from here to here. So that is important. ng model has the capability of receiving the information from the scope and also sending the information to the scope from the view. So that is important. So if you come back here, now I am saying that this A needs to be receiving the information from the scope but at the same time if the user modifies this particular value in the text box that need to be immediately propagated back to the scope affecting everywhere else. Similarly you can see I also provided B. So let us see what's going on here. So I just refresh this one. And now you can see the first point is that I have value 10 here and 10 is automatically received. Even though I am not using ng bind, I am using ng model. So ng model is capable enough to receive the values from the scope. So that is how I am receiving those two values. But at the same time, the benefit of using ng model is if you modify the value something like from 10 to something like 23, see what is going on this gets automatically modified. So let us check once more. I modify this one to 89. You can see this is automatically modified. So I did not write any code. AngularJS is smart enough that whenever you modify any information as part of this text box which is second text box which is bound to the variable b inside the scope this particular value whatever the user types in here needs to be sent back to the scope scope needs to be updated and once the scope is updated it actually propagates all those values back to our view with all the latest modifications so as part of this one you can see I'm changing value here which essentially goes back to our scope scope gets updated. If the scope gets updated again it gets back here and you can see I am going to have this one to be modified. So the value whatever you type here is not actually modifying this one. It looks like you are modifying this but instead this is this is not you are modifying directly. The modification whatever you are going to do as part of this input text box is being done at the scope level. 
your value of A is modified at the scope level. And as yeah, scope is getting updated, it reflects everywhere wherever A is available. So now again, whenever I say click this particular button, you can see what I'm saying is please get the values from the scope of A and B the latest values based on the modifications you do get the values into sum and sum will be immediately reflected right here so let us get back here and see how it works so the moment I click on sum you can see it is actually reflecting based on the new values you are providing so if you provide 4 if I provide 6 now you can see these two are modified however this is not but the moment you click on calculate you can see it is actually getting the latest values of these two and finally having the sum to be provided so in that way we actually covered all the three kinds of binding that is one way two way and one time bindings mm -hmm.